sculpt to cast earth is a technically engineered wax, ideal for painting and slush casting in lower ambient temperature environments. Higher fluidity and slower setup rate offers the modeler considerably more time to work. sculpt to cast earth is relatively soft and extremely versatile, capable of making all parts, particularly lending itself to hand manipulation and finishing without the associated defects of lifting or bulging experienced with traditional sculpture waxes. sculpt to cast waxes are thermally stable and will not separate in your pot. Correct conditioning is important with sculpt to cast waxes. An infrared thermometer is used to ensure the ideal temperature is reached for the primary coat. The craftsman is reproducing a wooden bowl with a polished inner surface while the outside is heavily textured bark. At the higher temperatures the primary coat is applied, the high fluidity of sculpt to cast wax allows you to ensure all parts of the mould are covered evenly, paying particular attention to the voids and crevices. Sculpt to cast earth wax can be applied either using brush strokes or stippling dependent on the surface of the mould. Third, fourth and if required fifth coats are applied at decreasing temperatures in order to build thickness prior to the slush process. Fluid until 131 Fahrenheit or 55 Celsius, the earth waxes are ideally suited to working in a cooler ambient environment, giving much more working time with the wax. Both halves of the mould are trimmed and tidied to ensure a clean join once assembled. The wax is poured into the mould at 131 Fahrenheit, 55 Celsius, at the bottom end of the working temperature range. Once released from the mould, the properties engineered into the sculpt to cast wax range are apparent. Note the smooth surface with no air bubbles and the lack of lifting or buckling. These defects are often encountered during this process and all add considerably to the amount of rework needed, either tidying up the final wax pattern or the finished casting. In developing this range of waxes, Precision have worked to all but eliminate these issues. A combination of hand tools, fine emery paper and white spirit are used to quickly remove any flashing and to add polish to the smooth surfaces. A small figurine is produced with the same sculpt to cast earth wax. The wax layers are built up exactly as they were on the bowl. As the mould is smooth, one fewer coat is required due to the lack of detail having to be picked out. Edges are easily trimmed using a flat modelling tool prior to assembling the mould. The soft and more forgiving nature of sculpt to cast earth makes hand finishing very easy. The join is very gently smoothed with a modelling knife and given a final polish using wet and dry paper and a little white spirit. Sculpt to cast Limerick Green is the second wax in the Precision range designed specifically for painting and slush casting. The harder, more rigid nature of this wax is particularly suited to the production of larger moulds. Limerick Green is easily able to cope with wide open surfaces without the associated defects of bulging or lifting characteristically experienced. 
specifically formulated to reproduce exceptionally fine detail, the faster setup rate makes this ideal for those working in a higher ambient temperature environment. The same mould of a wooden bowl is used to highlight the differences between the two waxes. Application can either be done using brush strokes or stippling depending on the requirements of the mould. Here you can see the transition from liquid to solid as the wax is applied. The setup temperature of 180 Fahrenheit or 85 Celsius makes Limerick Green ideal for those working in higher ambient temperature environments. Its high fluidity makes this wax ideal for ensuring exceptionally fine detail is reproduced. Thanks to the way Sculptocast Wax is engineered, there is no lifting or bulging, ensuring minimal cleanup time once the pattern is completed. As you approach the setup temperature, the wax can be applied more thickly, creating a more rigid build. Limerick Green's dry, less tacky nature means it will not stick to modelling tools, allowing edges to be very cleanly trimmed. Pouring the wax and slushing should be done no lower than 180 Fahrenheit or 85 Celsius. Once released from the mould, it is apparent how easily any excess material is removed. A final polish and the pattern is complete. Green is the second option in the Earth range, offering you a choice dependent on your colour preference. This mould has deep, smooth voids and no back, so the wax is built up layer by layer until the desired wall thickness is reached. Here, liquid wax is poured into the lettering in the mould. A little heat is applied to ensure the wax runs into the deep void created by the lettering. The craftsman now applies further coats at lower temperatures to build the walls, making use of the slower setup rate of the earth wax to ensure complete coverage. Once cooled, wax is trimmed back from the edge and the finished pattern is released. When viewed in detail, the absence of lifting or bulging is evident, even on such a smooth mould. The transition between the base and the lettering is extremely well defined, ensuring no further work is required prior to shelling. Precisioned Ultrabond Kryptonite is a high-grade wax-based adhesive used to create a fast and rigid bond when joining similar or dissimilar wax assemblies. Once the required temperature range of 250 to 300 Fahrenheit or 121 to 149 Celsius is reached, the wax can be applied like a glue before bringing both surfaces together. This wax offers enhanced bonding with excellent hot tack properties, ideal for attaching runner systems. The resulting overall bond strength is typically higher than that of adjoined waxes.
After the wax moulds are complete, the craftsman dips the mould into suspender slurry, a pre-mixed chemically suspended ceramic shell slurry that eliminates the need for continuous mixing and blending binder and refractory components. Be sure your patterns are clean and free from silicones or other contaminants before dipping. Using the cat box method, the craftsman places the freshly dipped and drained mould onto an open bed and flips sand by hand onto the mould, ensuring complete coverage of all surfaces. Once the excess stucco has been removed, the mould is allowed to dry. Suspender slurry contains a colour indicator taking the guesswork out of shell drying. Shells are dry when the colour changes from greenish yellow to orange. After the shell has dried and been de-waxed, craftsmen complete the metal pour.